How's it going everybody? Welcome to my channel. I hope that you're all doing great. Today we're going to talk about one of my absolute favorite books on the planet Earth and I believe that this book is an essential reading for all human beings and especially for understanding the human journey, our role here, our purpose here, our mission here, and just our life here. What is going on on this planet? There seems to be just so much going on that it's really hard to make sense of like what is really going on here. But I believe this book, Power Versus Force by Dr. David R. Hawkins, really does a great job at helping us make sense of things. Um, in this video, some of the things I will talk about is why there are really, you can say there are two emotions in the world or two categories bigger umbrella categories that all other emotions fall into. You could call those fear and love and why love is the only one that has power um, and fear usually is governed by force. We'll explain a little bit more about those in the video. I'll also talk about why those emotions or levels of consciousness that fall in that bigger umbrella kind of category of love, why those are the most conducive to practical success and achievement in the world as well. So let's begin. The book Power Versus Force was written by Dr. David R. Hawkins, and it has helped a lot of people. And really the biggest contribution that I believe this book makes and has made to the world is the introduction of the map of consciousness or the map of the levels of consciousness that Dr. David R. Hawkins shared with the world in this book. Um, which is really his most like seminal work. And he introduced that concept or that map of the levels of consciousness in this book and presented it to the world. So in this video, we're going to talk about kind of the methodology that led to the map of levels of consciousness coming into being. Then second of all, we're going to talk about kind of the resolution or what's the result of this map now existing like what are we going to do with this information what are we going to do with this map and some of the implications of this map and then lastly i'll talk about why i believe this book um, and the map of the levels of consciousness and understanding that is basically essential for us as human beings so let's first start by talking about the methodology that led to the development of the map of the levels of consciousness which in a little while we'll get to kind of the map itself but Basically, the methodology that he used is muscle testing or kinesiology. And basically what happened from my understanding is that he went to a workshop and this is at the early days of kind of muscle testing becoming a thing um, and people in the field of medicine using it for um, especially diagnosis uh, purposes. But basically, he went to a workshop and in the workshop, they use muscle testing for basically showing that the human body or like the greater consciousness um, knows what is good for us and it it makes our muscles react to stimuli that is good for us and healthy for us and empowering for us by making us and our muscles go strong and things that are not good for us and are negative for us and are bad for us they make our muscles go weak and the way they would demonstrate this is by and this is even without someone knowing like let's say so, so basically here's an experiment where they would do um, they would give someone an envelope a blank envelope and within that sometimes they would put like negative stimuli like artificial sugars or artificial sweeteners and they would have someone hold out their arm and another person would basically like, like, like they're holding that envelope in one arm and someone would press on the person's arm gently, not like, you know, trying to force it down, but like gently pressing on it to push it down. So like, like they would try to push it down. And if the stimuli that the subject was holding was positive for them, their muscles would go strong. It would get harder for the other person to push down their arm. And if the, and vice versa, if the stimuli that they were holding, even unbeknownst to them, even if they didn't know, which in these experiments, they didn't even know what they're holding. But because the stimuli, if it was positive or negative for them, the bigger consciousness at play, their muscles, like their body still knew and it would react the same. So if, you know, if the stimuli was negative, then their muscles would go weak and it was easier to push down their arm, even 
you know, despite or regardless of how strong the person is, you could have a strong bodybuilder or someone who is an elderly and doesn't have that much strength. In either case, they would kind of react the same to this to the stimuli that's positive or negative. Dr. Hawkins basically saw that and had the realization of like, what if this doesn't just apply to like a stimuli, like let's say something, someone's holding something that they may have an allergic reaction to and their body knows, hey, this is not good for us. If they're holding a berry that is poisonous, their body knows, hey, this is not good for us basically like and it will make them go weak he had the idea or the realization of like what if this doesn't just apply to physical things that someone's holding or you know physical objects what if it has also with just like holding something in mind what if it has with anything that's ever been right like if someone just holds an image of jesus christ in mind you know, and or, or a holy person, would their muscles still react the same? If they hold an image of of Hitler in mind or someone who is, you know, um, let's just say calibrates very low on the scales of conscious of, uh, of levels of consciousness, um, would they go weak? Would that same kinesiology muscle testing test, would that still apply to things held in mind um and just things in general in the world um people places things just anything right like instead of just like i hold i don't know this this candle and then this candle let's say is bad for me and it makes me go weak like what if you can just hold something in mind and so basically like that was the realization that he had um you know it wasn't muscle testing or kinesiology like is not something applied kinesiology wasn't something he had created but he had the realization of like can we apply this are there other applications for this and basically like a light bulb kind of went off in his mind to apply this to other things to things held in mind and basically throughout this experiment you know he would he managed to create a map of the levels of consciousness and the way he did this was He basically would say on a scale of zero to 1000, where 200 calibrates at the 200 and above calibrates at the level of integrity, you know, what, where does shame calibrate, you know, and then basically someone would hold out their arm or subject would hold out their arm and they, they'd say like shame calibrates at 300. And then basically the subject would go weak, meaning that it's, it's not true. It's false. Um, so it's not 300 shame calibrates under 200 and then the, the person would be strong indicating that that is true. So it's like, it's like, it's like, a you know, that practice that's like, you, you know, the game where people are like, you're getting warmer, warmer, you're getting closer, closer, closer. It's like, you're getting closer to the truth. Shame calibrates under 100, the arm would be strong. And then it's, and then he would get more gra- granular of like shame calibrates at 40 the person's arm wouldn't be um, strong. So it's not 40. Shame caliber is 35, you know, and just keep going down um, like that. And basically through this experiment, he was able to create a map of levels of consciousness of the, of really, I was about to say the human journey, but really anything, Um, you know, animals, vegetables plants like we they all have different levels of consciousness and this the scale of consciousness this map of the levels of consciousness it highlights the whole gamut of this experience of life um humans can fall into that we all fall into like different levels of consciousness um plants animals like i said like everything books uh, places, movies, songs, different genres of music, like everything calibrates and has a certain frequency. Um, and he was able to map this out. Now, some people may look at that and be like, oh, that the whole map, you know, that whole process or whatever is bogus or whatever. It doesn't make sense. And that's fine. I personally don't use this muscle testing technique, A, because you always need someone else. 
B, I feel like it could be something that becomes limiting where you like kind of using it as like a crutch or it becomes like a hindrance. Um, but, you know, I per so I personally like don't use the method or you can say like, oh, that methodology or the way he got to the map of the levels of consciousness is bogus or whatever. But when you look at the map of the levels of consciousness, regardless of whether you agree or not with how he got to it, the map itself is incredibly useful and rings true when you look at it. Now, unfortunately, and this genuinely breaks my heart, I cannot show you the map of the levels of consciousness right now, put it on the screen. I can't do that because two, two of the most popular videos on my channel, one was called the letting go technique explained, which I've reposted um, with edits on my channel. You can check that out. I'll put the link up here. Um, and then there was another one that I had to completely take down. Both of these I had to completely take down. But basically, in those, I showed the map of the levels of consciousness. Then Veritas Publishing, which um, basically, so this is um, Power versus Force, the book we're talking about. Come on, autofocus, help me out here. Power versus Force. Now, this is, um, it's published by Hay House, which is a huge publishing company. I guess autofocus just doesn't want to play it along. Um, it's published by Hay House now, but pre- Prior to Hay House, um, it was published by Dr. Hawkins' uh, own publishing house called Veritas Publishing. And Veritas Publishing, you know, Dr. Hawkins has passed away now, but, you know, the management of Veritas Publishing basically um, decided to just like go and copyright strike any video on YouTube that has shown the map of the levels of consciousness, which I had a lot of my own. Um, qualms and issues with that, which I dive deeply into in the new intro that I made for the re-uploaded letting go technique explained video that I post on my channel. So if you want to kind of hear all my qualms and my issues with that whole situation, please go and check that out. I go into kind of like what happened and the, the whole copyright stri strike situation. But unfortunately, because they go after people who post that, which to me makes no sense because it was like, this tool is meant to be used by people, but I digress. So I can't show it to you, uh, but, you know, but, but still it's all over the internet. You can easily find it if you just, you know, look up map of the levels of consciousness. But, um, you know, like I said, I've had two of my videos taken down. The letting go technique explained was like my most popular video. I had like 14,000 views at a time that it was taken down and got copyright striked. And then another one was, basically the similarity or comparing and combining the Enneagram, which is a tool, a personality typing tool I really like with the map of the levels of consciousness, like basically drawing parallels between the two. That video was also taken now. So because of those reasons, I can't show you, and it significantly breaks my heart, I can't show you the map of the levels of consciousness, but I can still go over the concept. So I'm just going to read the levels to you. Um, even though I can't show it, but it would significantly help if you just like look it up and find it and, um, you know, or buy Power versus Force, you know, or one of, in any of Dr. Hawkins's books, you can find them. But, you know, ha to have the map in front of you, it would help. But I'll read it to you. Sometimes I like to look at these as like the the basically like the levels of the human journey or like the steps of the human life sometimes, you know, um, it's. In a sense, it's a beautiful roadmap to help us understand life. And I, there's not a single day that goes by that I don't see something and I, and I start thinking about the map of the levels of consciousness, whether it's like something in the news or some or a person, a song, a this and that. And I'm like, oh, like that seems like it would calibrate at this or like just simply due to having this understanding, like it's like everything falls somewhere in that map for me. And just it's like the the concept is like an iOS installed in my brain where I see everything through its lens. So that's why I said at the beginning, it's, a, it's an essential reading this book and understanding this map. But at the very bottom of the map of the levels of consciousness, you have the level shame. Um, and shame calibrates at 20, the level 20. So above that, next level is guilt. Above that is apathy. Above that is grief. So basically, as you go higher in these levels, even though you could say apathy 
is not great. Grief is not great, right? But they have more energy than shame, than guilt. So keep that in mind as we go higher in these levels. So, you know, we have shame, guilt, apathy, and then we have grief at level 75. Now keep in mind, under 200, all of these levels can be called levels of force, or I like to call them like levels of fear, or just like lower paradigms of life, or like 3D, whatever you want to call it. So above grief at level 75, we have fear at level 100, then we have desire, then we have anger. So this is something to note. I really like this, to think about this um, sometimes. Anger, right, may not seem like a good thing, right? But to someone who is in grief at level 75 and anger calibrates at level 150, anger has higher, or, you know, if, it, if they're in apathy or grief, anger has higher energy. So sometimes the move to anger from apathy to anger is an upward mobility and it's an upward movement on the levels of consciousness and is a good thing so if you have someone who's apathetic or or guilty or full of grief or fear and they move to anger it's almost like that is good you know whereas in in most situations you would say oh anger is bad but for someone in those lower levels it's actually an upward spiral it's an upward mobility so it is a good thing um so it's it, that's always been fascinating to me now, next level is pride. And now we get to the, one of the most important levels in this map. And the reason this is important is because this is where everything changes. Um, at level 200, we have courage. And courage is also the level of integrity. Or sorry, 200, aka courage, is the level of integrity. Below this, basically, we have not true or falsehood above 200 we have truth or power we have love so things that are above 200 promote life and things that are below 200 promote the opposite of life <laughs> i don't want to say the word you know because youtube can flag you know words that you say but um opposite of life they are anti-life the things that are under 200 they take away um life and energy and are the levels of force in this in this paradigm that we're looking at them through or they are you can say that the big umbrella emotion could be like fear anything above 200 could be love um i also think that everything below 200 can be calibrate or align with self-serving they are selfish they are self-service service to self uh, oriented and everything above 200 is now you're getting into serving into caring for others into service into um, not just self-serving but other serving and um, they are more life affirming so keep that in mind because 200 could be called basically the most important level um, on this map because once you move above 200 you've you've changed paradigms you're in a new level um you know that's not like i'm on a new level basically it's like it's above 200 you're in a, in a whole new new world really because you would if you were under 200 and you move above 200 you will literally feel like you now live on a different planet like life is different you will look back at how you saw life when you were under 200 and it's just like it's like a different world like you don't even understand how that could have you could have saw it that way it's it's completely like night and day it's like the wizard of oz where it turns from black and white to color so keep that in mind that 200 is like the most powerful or the, not the most powerful but the most important level and it's courage having the courage um so that's very important Level 250 is neutrality. That's the next level after courage. After that, we have willingness. After that, we have acceptance at level 350. Then we have another important level on the map of the levels of consciousness, which is reason at level 400. 
So at level 400, we have reason, which lasts until level of 499 before, you know, before 500, because we have another jump that we make in the map when we cross from 499 to 500. And the jump is from a material or like a scientific or a physical understanding of life to now one that is predominantly spiritual. When you go from 499 to to 500, you are making, it's like a paradigm shifts again from a purely physical or material plane or scientific level to a spiritual plane. So the level 400 is reason. And basically Dr. Hawkins talks about how a lot of like amazing scientists, amazing philosopher, amazing minds have not been able to make that leap. Like they get so close but because they don't acknowledge God, they don't acknowledge spirit, they stay at 499. I think Freud got pretty close, but now don't quote me on this, but this is, I think, is what I kind of remember. Like Freud got pretty close and I think he was at 499, but I think Jung, uh, Carl Jung, was able to go beyond it to like 520 because he acknowledged spirit, he acknowledged God, he acknowledged uh, um, the higher levels. And and so on and so forth. There's many great minds that kind of where they got stuck under two under sorry under 500, which the level of 500 is the level of love, and anything above 500 is a, people who calibrate at levels of, above 500. Their predominant um, view of life is one that life is a spiritual life. Um, you can say like. We are spiritual beings having a physical experience, you know, like that is they see spirit as the primary motive, primary force, primary thing in life that another uh, switch happens, another flip of perception happens. So at level 500, we have love above that. We have joy at 540. Then we have six at level 600. We have peace. Um, and at this point you're getting, that's the second to last level. And at the very, 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 very highest levels of human existence, you have enlightenment, uh, from level 700 to a thousand, that all falls into enlightenment. And so at this point you have very few individuals throughout human history who have fallen in, into that. Um, and those are people such as Jesus Christ, Buddha, Krishna, uh, Zoroaster, and uh, some other prophets. So it's, to me, I kind of like to look at this as like map of like the human journey. Like maybe you can say the goal is we start at the bottom and throughout not just this lifetime, but throughout our lifetimes, we are trying to work towards end of the journey, which is enlightenment, which is when you realize you are a spirit being having a human experience and you wake up to your reality as a spirit, not a physical being. And that's when you kind of wake up from the illusion of life, from the the Maya, as it would call it in Buddhism or Hinduism or the dream or <laughs> the simulation or whatever you want to call it. So um it's interesting to think about this stuff. And the reason I said this is an essential reading for any human is because I think it's important to understand this because then also you can understand that everyone and everything falls into different levels of being. And you kind of have a tool and Dr. Hawkins talks about this a lot. Um, he says that like he believes that his most important contribution to the world is a tool it is that he's given the world a tool to be able to calibrate truth versus falsehood. And it says that the human mind um, is incredibly bad at being able to tell truth from falsehood. And because of that, uh, or being able to tell from what's conducive to life and what's not, because of that, humanity has suffered greatly. And that his biggest contribution is to give humanity a tool where he can, where they can calibrate that. But for me, like, understanding these levels and everyone and everything falls within these different levels. And he has books. He, he does use some examples of people and 
places and books and things that fall into different levels like he'd say like this book calibrates at this level and this book and basically the again the same method right like the book power versus force calibrates at this you know at, at 300 true or you know at 300 basically and then if it goes the arm goes weak that's false if it goes strong it's true um and so on and so forth but basically he has another book that he goes into that a lot more um he has thousands of calibrations in that other book i think it's called truth versus falsehood which i love um but yeah i think you know he has a lot of calibrations just in different books and stuff but everything falls into these categories so like for me the reason i feel like this is essential reading is because you get to understand life in a much more clear way and it helps in decision making it helps in understanding situations and in life and one of the things dr david r hawkins talks about is that the reason he talks about how the earth plane this physical reality there are other planes and dimensions other realities but the reason this one is so unique is because it is like a hodgepodge it's like a mix of all of these different levels of consciousness you have someone who calibrates so high like a jesus christ but then you have someone who calibrates at, at at 20 at the level of shame. How do you navigate that? He, you know, in a lot of other realms, I think the levels of consciousness are a lot more homogenous where everyone's kind of like the same level. Like, so like how hard is it to be peaceful if everyone calibrates at peace? You know what I mean? So the human journey offers this, this experiment, this situation where not everyone calibrates the same. So how do you navigate that? How do you stay at at love, at reason, at acceptance when you have this mixture, this mixed bag of consciousness? And that's what produces and promotes the highest growth and evolution of our spirit um, and the opportunity to learn karmic lessons and work through karma. That's what promotes um, the karmic growth of our spirit and evolution of our spirit, this whole mixture. The, the fact that there's such a mix of levels of consciousness in one place, in one planet. So I'm pretty obsessed with Dr. David R. Hawkins' books and works and, and audiobooks and talks and stuff. So I can talk about this stuff all, all day. But let's talk about maybe some few more things about the map itself. And then we kinda, we're going to talk about kind of like, so what? You know, what is the resolution? What are we going to do with this now, now that we have this? Okay, so... One of the things about the map or like the testing method, primarily um, the muscle testing or kinesiology method that Dr. Hawkins used for this, there are a few things that you need to kind of do or have in place to get the most accurate results. One is the statements have to be declarative statements. They can't be a yes or no question. They have to be like, this person calibrates at 200. It's not like, does this person calibrate at 200, right? yes or no it's not like that it's like it's a declarative statement so that's one thing two it can be future oriented like asking about things that are going to happen in the future like oh two years from now so and so or this and this this and that is going to happen you can't you can't do that uh it doesn't work and another thing is you need integrity in in three things to get the most accurate results so integrity one thing dr hawkins realized is like people who calibrate under the level of integrity under the level of 200 um which means like their primary primary motive might not always be seeking truth or truth as an important value so you have to have integrity like the test subject person inducting the test and test subject have to have have to have calibration above 200 have to calibrate at the level of integrity and above to get the most accurate results second of all you need to have integrity of intention you have to have good intention for what you are trying to use this method for you can't have like your intention is to like roast someone and be like, oh, see, you're, you, you know, you're a dummy. You calibrated at this. You know what I mean? Like, like you can't have that negative bad intention and then get accurate results. So that's kind of like the second thing in terms of integrity. And the third thing is you have to have, and basically like, 
I mean, I said like the third, but really like you have to have, it's, I said like you have to have integrity in your intention, in your subjects and in your uh, objective, but then intention and objective are kind of same, the same thing, but basically you need integrous subjects who are inducting the test. And then you need to have like a good intention, the right intention, have integrity in your intention for the test to work. Okay. So basically now we're going to talk about kind of like the resolution of this information. All right. We have the map of the levels of consciousness. Now what, what are we going to do with this? So one thing that Dr. Hawkins and all of his books and all of his works talked about a lot was this concept of the raising tide lifts all ships, right? Like in the ocean, when the tide goes up, all ships on the ocean, on the surface of the ocean, go up with it. And he used this as a, a metaphor for levels of consciousness. As the levels of consciousness on the planet evolve and rise, and basically the reason, one of the reasons that like levels above 200 have power and then everything below that has force, force takes constant, like you have to literally force people to maintain it, right? It's force exertion you get a force 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 whereas power like genuinely motivates like basically like one of the examples he uses is gandhi um and gandhi like calibrated really high and his cause had power it it encouraged and it motivated people genuinely to join it like you didn't have to force anyone you didn't have to exert force people were genuinely motivated to help Another example is like Martin Luther King Jr. Like those causes, those people had power where they didn't have to enforce and motivate and and like people were self-motivated due to that high intention and that high power. Power, one person of power can lift the tide way more than the lower levels. It's like, it's kind of like, um, you know how like some material, like, gold or silver or iron or you know these different metals have different weight so some of these are way more dense so you can have a smaller amount of it but it's heavier um or like muscle versus fat like muscle is heavier than fat tissue so basically it's like scale you know those people who have power you can have one of those but they have a greater weight they have a greater impact on the overall consciousness so you you have someone like Jesus Christ single-handedly, a presence of someone at that high level of consciousness on the planet raises the whole tide. They have a gravitational pull. They have power. They have so much power. Whereas the the people or things that calibrate lower than 200, they don't have as much power. There's force there and there's constant exertion and you got to force people and it, it just takes... It's like not a motivating force. Like people don't get self-motivated to want to join the cause or, or you know, or do things out of self-volition. It's like you have to force. Um, so, and it has less power. But nonetheless, so due to that, like people who have power, you don't even need as many, but they lift the tide of the levels of consciousness. So basically one thing I wrote down is, and this is based on the understandings I've gotten from Dr. Hawkins, it's like, to become more conscious, to raise your own level of consciousness is one of the greatest gifts you can give to the world, to humanity as, as a whole, as, in general. Why? Because, again, the raising tide lifts all ships and you don't need as many people who are in power, calibrated above 200, to raise more people because they have more weight, they have more pull, they have more power. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, another important point to keep in mind is that in the 1980s, so Dr. Hawkins like has in some of his books, I think maybe even Power versus Force as well, but he basically calibrates like different eras of humanity. Um, at the time of Jesus, at the time of Jesus' existence on the planet, humanity calibrated at the level 100, which is, again, under the level of truth, under the level of integrity, which is 200. And in the, up until like 1980, I don't know what exactly, but like in the mid-1980s, up until then, and Dr. Hawkins has calibrated, but like up until then, the whole of humanity was under 200. And then it jumped in the mid-1980s to above 200, 
which is in Dr. Hawkins' estimation, is the most significant jump evolution of consciousness for humanity. Uh, and the reason that is, is because now humanity as a whole, like the majority, are more concerned with truth and integrity because 200 is above integrity. So like the more predominant obje objective or like a uh, mode of being or focus is now integrity or like levels above 200. So that was a huge significant jump. And according to Dr. Hawkins, it was during or around the time of the harmonic convergence um, on the planet. So that was a big jump. And according, like I said, according to Dr. Hawkins, one of the biggest evolutionary steps in the levels of consciousness for humanity. Now, another thing that I think this map provides is basis of decision and a basis of being able to tell truth from falsehood. So, you know, I think that not that I personally like calibrate things constantly myself, but having read a lot of different calibrations in books such as Truth Versus Falsehood by Dr. David R. Hawkins um, and some of his other books, you become attuned or develop a sense that helps in your discernment. When you read thousands of calibrations, it's like it almost becomes intuitive. Like, mm, I think that thing calibrates at that or that person calibrates at that not necessarily in a you, you, not in like you want to go around and constantly judge people but it it helps in your discernment like oh like this ideology or this thing you know calibrates under 200 this person or this organization's intention is highly aligned with that ideology and that ideology calibrates under 200 they, that that thing that situation those people that organization also may most likely calibrate under 200 which is under integrity so they might not have the best intentions at least not intentions maybe they believe they have good intentions but not intentions that are most conducive to development of humanity to life so it just helps you with decision making as well in terms of like it helps you with discernment but it also helps you with decision making because like you can say okay if I am going to act out of this emotion, this anger or this and that, where does I calibrate at, right? Like where it's basically low consciousness action, low vibe. You know, if I am listening to this type of music and again, as you become more attuned to the, the levels of consciousness, you're like, that is not conducive to higher levels of consciousness. It's not high vibe. You know, people sometimes say like, Oh, that's low vibe. That movie is low vibe. That song is low vibe. And it's a real thing. Like it's calibrates under 200. It's not conducive to growth and to life and to flourishing. It doesn't promote that. It promote degeneration of the human being, human spirit, human mind, etc. So it helps in decision making. It's a good basis for decision and it's a good basis for discernment. Now, I want to share a quote from Dr. David R. Hawkins, which is one of my favorite quotes i think in the whole power versus force and it goes as this hell is the inevitable consequence of one's own decisions it's the final outcome of constantly choosing the negative and thus isolating oneself from love so i think that's an incredibly powerful powerful quote and it shows that if you constantly choose levels under 200, act out of levels under 200, choose to consume music and media and movies and hang out with people who are under 200 and this and that, like you are promoting more of that, right? Like you are choosing, you know, not to get dr super dramatic, but like in a real, real sense, it's like you're choosing between hell or heaven. You're choosing between fear or love. You're choosing between force versus power. You're choosing between serving or self-serving. And it, it has a ripple effect in the world. So again, this map and why this is a essential reading for human beings is because it helps you understand these things. It helps you understand um, what are you choosing for and what are you choosing against. Another thing I wanted to mention is like, I like this languaging and I think Dr. David Hawkins also alludes to it in the book, but basically it's like what is aligned with heaven, what is aligned with love, what is aligned with serving and the betterment of all mankind, it makes us go strong. If you were to muscle test someone 
who is thinking of Jesus Christ, who is thinking of something that Calvary is high, it makes them go strong. So th things that are aligned with heaven are life conducive or conducive to life, are life giving, life affirming. They make us go strong. And things that are life denying, they make us go weak. And things that are aligned with hell, you know, uh, consequently, they make us go weak. And it's just, you know, one thing that Dr. Hawkins says in one of his talks or books is that it's not the necessarily like the body, right, that like knows these things. It's the consciousness, the greater consciousness that works and moves through the body or like embodies the body, uh, envelops the body. It's that greater consciousness that knows. It's that cosmic consciousness that knows these things. Um, and where the calibrations come from. So just something to keep in mind. And lastly, I think the most important aspect or contribution of the map of the levels of consciousness to life, to us, to human beings, is that it gives us a roadmap or a yeah, a roadmap of the journey back home. And the way I see it is you have the small self, the separated self the ego and this ego is trying to make its way back to the self with the capital s the big self spirit um our essential self our higher self our essence and between this like small self to the s with the capital self the spirit the essence god lies the map of consciousness and the map of consciousness also you know you can say is like it's not only a map, but it's also like a compass. And one of Dr. Hawkins's books is called Don't, or sorry, one of his audiobooks or talks on Audible is called Don't Sail Without a Compass, which when I listened to this first in like 2017, it was, it had a big impact on me. Um, and another way that to think about that compass is our own intuition, you know, and our, it's like when you stand, understand a map of the levels of consciousness, it's fascinating because it makes your intuition make sense. We've all, we've all had encounters with people, places, things that intuitively we felt like something is not right. And it took some time to understand or, you know, unfortunately come to a circumstance that's so bad that that then makes you understand what your intuition, what your gut feeling was sensing. And it was sensing that this thing, this place, this person calibrates under 200 like it, it doesn't have it doesn't align with life it doesn't align with integrity and our intuition is that compass as well that when you understand the map of the levels of consciousness you understand what your intuition you more accurately understand what your intuition is possibly picking up on which is like the underlying resonance or calibration of something so it's like the map of the levels of consciousness gives us a road map back to home, back to God, back to our essential essence and self, our true self, our self with the capital S. It gives us a way back to our spirit. Um, and I think on the deepest level, we all yearn for that. Maybe we don't recognize, most of us don't recognize what it is that we yearn for, but we feel like something is missing in our lives. We feel like this ain't it. Like this is not the way it's meant to be. Like, you know, this feels like a fallen world. Like this doesn't feel like sometimes what it's meant to be. Like you see life and you see suffering and you see things in the world. And it's like, this is not the way it's meant to be. Like we, we all have some sort of like essence or idea or understanding or deep remembrance of like essence and what it's supposed to be. And I think we all deeply yearn for that and we miss that. And I think the map of the levels of consciousness gives us a roadmap back to home, back to God, back to enlightenment, back to self, back to our essence and our journey back home. Um, it, it lights the journey back home, but we still, and it gives us a roadmap of that journey, but we still have to walk the journey. But having the roadmap is indescribably invaluable. So thank you to Dr. David R. Hawkins who provided us with this map. And lastly, in the fashion of all his books, I will end this content part of this video with saying that dr hawkins ended all his books with which is gloria in excelsis deo
Thank you all for watching this video. I hope that it's helpful for you. And I hope that you sensed a resonance with what I was saying and what was the contents in this book and that you go check out Power versus Force because I do think it will guide your and help your journey um, of evolution as a person, as for all of us as a humankind. I think it will guide that uh, journey of evolution of consciousness uh, for humankind. And that's why I thought it's an essential reading for understanding the human journey and an essential reading for all humankind. So I hope that this serves you. I hope that you find it helpful. If you enjoyed this content, please subscribe to my channel for more content and like this video as to let me know that you enjoyed it. So thank you for watching this video. Again, my name is PJ and I hope to see you on my channel again very soon. Until then, take care and goodbye. And again, one more time in Dr. David R. Hawkins fashion, Gloria in Excelsis Deo.